My name is Lance Budwall, and I would like to welcome you to this evening's webinar and remind you that we are recording the session for those who cannot participate live or for anyone wishing to review the material at a later time. Once we begin, you, you may be asked to respond to a question or you may have a question yourself and you can handle this by uh, typing your question in the question pane in the panel on the right side of your screen or by raising your hand or clicking on your hand so you can be unmuted, giving you the opportunity to share verbally with the entire group. Assisting in the background tonight is Wendy Kane, who will be monitoring those areas I just talked about, as well as handling the recording of tonight's session. So we want to thank Wendy for helping out. And Wendy, again, please jump in anytime uh, you think you need to add something that, that I'm missing or, or we need to share with everyone. Using Diplomacy is course 206, a required course for the Lions University Master's Program that is designed to help Lions lead at the district level. And the Master's Program involves the completion of 10 required courses that you see on the left-hand side of your screen and at least five of the elective courses on the right side of your screen. This is the Lions University website lionsuniversity.org, and this slide shows a, a page in the bachelor's program listing the courses offered on that level. Uh, the master's program page would have a similar information but would include the courses obviously in the master's program. If you were to click on any of the courses listed on the page, you would then be taken directly to that particular course page giving you all the details for that course along with a link to register for the course and any links to any handouts uh, for the course, and then eventually the course quiz. We even have a calendar page you can click on to see what courses are scheduled in the weeks and months ahead. This slide shows what a course page typically looks like. Um, it lists the course name and number, gives a description of the course, shows you who the faculty member is, and gives you links to register for the class in any course materials. If you haven't already done so, you'll need to create a separate username and password to get in to register for the course and have access to the quiz. After participating in the webinar or watching the video of the webinar, you can click on the, um, the area down at the bottom marked Mark as Completed on that tab on the page and you'll be allowed to then uh, go forward and take the quiz. When you complete the quiz and submit your answers, you will instantly be given the results. You can then click on the My Account tab near the top of the page and see a first-hand view of the courses you've completed in both the bachelor and the master level courses. On this side, on the left side, this shows uh, the courses that have been taken and, and passed in the bachelor's program. And so that, that is a, something that you can uh, easily track your progress throughout the uh, the time of Lions University. Our faculty member this evening is Lion Jama Wall, uh, my better half. And Jama is the Multiple District 1 GLT coordinator as well as the GLT coordinator for Area 1C, which covers the states of Indiana, Kentucky, and Michigan in addition to Illinois. She has been a presenter many, many times on the state and international level as well as the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. And we're very pleased to have her here as a faculty member for Lions University. And tonight she's joining us from Southern Illinois where she's visiting her aunt who will be having surgery tomorrow. So uh, with that, we hope everything goes well tomorrow and uh, we welcome Jama. And Jama, you can take it over from here. Thank you, Lion Bud, for introducing me and uh, organizing the event. And thank you, Wendy, for managing uh, the technology for the, the video. And I also want to thank each of you for joining the webinar. Uh, your commitment to enhance your leadership skills and increase your knowledge by participating in the Lions University will really bring personal improvement. And when these new skills and knowledge are shared with other Lions, our clubs and our districts will become stronger which will really ultimately lead to more service in our communities. And 
That's why we all became lions to serve. So let's get started and take a look at the objectives. Tonight, we're going to define diplomacy. We're going to connect diplomacy to leadership. We're going to identify key behaviors that lead to diplomatic leadership. And then we're going to discuss how diplomatic leaders can impact service. So let's get started. Webster defines diplomacy as the art and science of conducting negotiations between nations or the skill in handling affairs without arousing hostility. The Reader's Digest Encyclopedia Dictionary defines diplomacy as the art or practice of conducting international relations as in negotiating alliances, treaties, and agreements, or tact or skill in dealing with people. Since Lions Clubs International is the largest, most active service organization in the world, which is made up of clubs serving our individual communities, all of these definitions apply to a degree. However, extrapolating from both sources a bit further, diplomacy for lionism means seeking win-win situations, allowing for all to be heard, and treating people with respect and dignity. So how does a diplomatic leader do it? According to Jacket, a diplomatic leader is guided by trust, integrity, values, and compassion. Tact and respect achieve results. Commitment to service and those we serve are the ultimate goals. These are pretty lofty ideals, but lions who lead with diplomacy have successful clubs or districts and are thereby successful service to our community, whether that's locally or globally. So let's take a deeper look and identify key behaviors that lead to diplomacy. Diplomatic leaders recognize the importance of building productive relationships. They understand the value of treating people the way they would like to be treated. They provide criticism to others privately, accept criticism from others with an open mind, and are problem solvers who look to the greater good or for that win-win for everyone. And they pay attention to detail, especially the details related to working with others. A diplomatic leader recognizes others for a job well done and apologizes if the need arises. When negotiating agreement, a diplomatic leader achieves the goal to solve a problem, manage a conflict, or seek a solution, and preserve the relationships. Negotiating means bargaining for power. A diplomatic leader hears all sides and works to implement a solution that meets the needs of all parties, or at least finds a compromise that works well for all. Power is not used negatively. Maintaining integrity is a key behavior shown by diplomatic leaders. They act in accordance with their own values and with those of the organization. The values of Lions Clubs International are stated in our Lions Mission Statement and Code of Ethics. In the handouts that you have for this session, you should have, re have received a copy of the Lions Clubs International Code of Ethics and the Mission Statement. So let me just read the Mission Statement for you. The Lions Mission Statement. To empower volunteers to serve their communities, meet humanitarian needs, encourage peace, and promote international understanding through Lions Clubs. And our code of ethics is rather lengthy, so I'm not going to go ahead and take the time to read that to you, but I hope you've had a chance to kind of look that over. Because my next question to you is, how does our code of ethics, how does our mission statement uh, affect diplomacy and how we act within our clubs? So who has an idea that they would like to share? If anyone has uh, something they'd like to share as far as uh, your ideas on, on how utilizing the mission statement might improve diplomacy, raise your hand. And uh, we'll have uh, Wendy call on you and, and uh, unmute you. Or you can type your, 
your statement in the question box and we'll we'll have that shared too as well. We have anyone there, Wendy? We do. Lion Dawn has raised her hand. I'm going to unmute you. Hey Dawn. Hi. Hi. Uh, um, <laughs> if we could be a good ambassador and um, just bring a uh, an open mind, open heart, and and um, some flexibility and understanding to um, the different cultures if you're traveling to a place of a, a very different culture. I think it's differently when you're traveling within the U.S., but maybe something of a very different culture. You want to be open-minded to um, their, their, um, some of their, um, maybe some of their different rituals or things like that, some of, of the way um, they would like to be greeted and, and treated, so you just need to be um, just just respectful, and um, uh, I think that would go a long way. So, to kind of be the diplomat, um, to make sure that you understand the culture, understand the customs, and, and you respect that, I, and, and you mentioned, well, maybe not so much in the U.S., I think sometimes in clubs maybe we have an older generation, younger generation thing going on, and it's could be possible that we need, you know, we need to take a look at that in terms of how we treat others too, in terms of our diplomatic um, opportunities. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thanks, Don. We have a couple of um, comments that have come through the questions pane, and uh, Lion Marina shared treating members with respect and as you would like to be treated, similar to one of the phrases that you shared, Lion Jama. Um, Lion Michael said that Lions use the mission statement to be an ambassador for Lionism, treating everyone equally, making sure that all sides get a voice. Lion I wrote, think that's really, really important that everybody have that opportunity for their voice to be heard. Um, in, in my professional life, I was a school counselor and a principal, and many times when there were difficulties in, in, in an educational setting, it was mostly that somebody needed to have their voice heard. And once that, that voice was heard, then you could move forward and you could problem solve and you could come up with a solution that worked for everybody. Thank you. A couple more. Uh, let's see, Line Roke shared um, being kind and understanding and flexible to accommodate. Uh, I, the, the word flexible keeps coming up. I think that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Lion Shelley shared, diplomacy often means being polite. We need to be kinder to each other. Lion AJ, I'm sorry about that. No, I, just, I think that there was a, a few years ago, there was an activity called a random act of kindness. And um, it's not such a bad idea. We just generally need to treat people with kindness, but we also need to, you know, maybe make that extra effort. So I appreciate that answer, too. Mm -hmm. Lion AJ had a couple of comments. Uh, searching for the win-win is our ultimate goal and to be an effective ambassador for all of Lions. And I do think that diplomacy and we've had ambassador a couple of times here really do play hand in hand together. And AJ also shared that there are always differences that we can deal with effectively. And I, that's a recognition I think too that every Everybody, everything isn't always going to be, you know, sunshine and rainbows. There are going to be times where we do have hurdles and we do have difficulties, but if we look at them as opportunities to solve that problem and we incorporate as many people as we can to solve that problem, then, then, then that's, that's an act of diplomacy. That's a way to, to help everybody feel involved. I would be curious, if, have any of your Lions Club taken time at a, at a meeting to just talk about the Lions mission statement or the code of ethics? Now, is that something that we that we should do on a regular basis? Okay, I'm not hearing any comments from anybody. We, yeah, anybody raise their hand for that one? There are a few comments that are starting to come in. Um, okay. And it looks like... Uh, several folks have shared, let's see, Lion Kendra shared that they've shared it at the officer's training. Um, a couple of folks responded that no, they haven't, but yes, they should, kind of answering your questions. Um, and let's see, another person, Lion AJ, shared that uh, they do reference those at every Lion new member induction. Okay. And those are all 
good time to make sure that we we go back and it it's you know we remember every time there's a new member brought into our club we remember what brought us into alliance what caused us to have that that moment where our heart was touched and so hearing our mission uh, going over going over those um, the, the code of ethics are all opportunities for us to to make sure that we're dealing with people in a dip, in a diplomatic way. Are, are there any uh, any other ideas that we need to share about the code of ethics or the mission statement? There were a couple of other comments they, that came in from Leanne, Lyons, Leanne, John, and Don that I think were consistent with some of the messages and responses that we had previously about being flexible and open-minded, uh, being respectful of issues that come up and how we treat people um, and trying to put ourselves in their place and see where they're coming from. So several comments um, from those three as well as some of the other lines that we heard from. And that's, those are all really good ideas to walk in that other person's shoes um, to make sure that when we you know when we come when we come to our alliance meetings we've we've all you know probably been at work or you know been at home or been doing whatever we you don't know what kind of state of mind people are coming in and so um, it's important when we walk in that lion uh, on into that lion's activity whether it's a meeting or a fundraiser or a service project that we put our best foot forward and we treat our our comrades our fellow lions. With, with that respect and, and uh, with that dignity so that we can have success in all of our, our activities. Uh, let's go on and take a look at um, the next slide. And it talks about considering the idea of power. Um, so let's consider that idea of power. And diplomacy requires that advantages are gained without force. Uh, all situations, as, as we mentioned earlier in our discussion, will not be that win-win. There will be times when the benefit of the few is lost by providing for the majority. But as lion leaders, we need to remember, and even as lions, even if, if we're not like the leadership within the club, uh, that minority still has, has to have that respect um, that they need, that they deserve. So. A diplomatic leader knows that the use of force or coercion leads to poor results. Positive results come from people being engaged, productive, and satisfied as volunteers. So we need to feel good about the work that we're doing. We need to feel proud about the work that we're doing. We need to feel that the work that we're doing is, is causing us to, um, to, to feel that respect. So I've, I've talked at you a little bit. We've had a little bit of discussion. Um, we now have a couple of scenarios that I, I would like your, your thoughts on. And um, these are made up. So <laughs> I wasn't speaking of anybody in particular when I made these up. But let's take a look at application one. And let's imagine that you are the district governor. And for several years, Two past district governors have been undermining the sitting district governor. They just can't seem to let go of the reins. And they think they are doing this for the, quote, good of the district, unquote. But in reality, many lions are not wanting to move up to cabinet posts due to the situation. And it's also been making it very difficult for you as the district governor. So how can you use some of the diplomacy concepts and ideas that we've talked about here tonight to come to some kind of solution, let, let me let me hear your thoughts. Share share with everybody, please. Lion Dawn, we're coming back to you. And also, if anyone wants to respond, reply in the questions pane, we will capture there as well. Well, I think even if you look first at the code of ethics. Um, the, the third one down says, and remember, uh, in building up my business, it's not necessarily not necessary to tear someone down. And I think by um, them feeling like they need to be the ones in charge, then they're really saying that there's nobody else that can do it the way they can do it. So it's it's maybe indirectly, but it's still a criticism of the people that they have there. And obviously, they haven't maybe spent enough time in building up the leadership to have those people there. And I think that's part of not only diplomacy, but also um, 
leadership skills. You don't just get out in front and stay there. You, you find people to bring along with you and stand with you so that when um, it's time to have the reins let go, then there are people prepared there. So I think that you, you're, you're sort of twofold here. You have two different issues, um, both of which you're going to have to address with some uh, diplomacy. But I think that um, by them not accepting somebody else, it's really a criticism um, more than a, a lack of ability to um, think somebody else can do it. Well, it, it's what leads to the criticism is them thinking that nobody else has the ability that they have. Right, and so they, they don't, you know, no one has been prepared to take over the reins, so therefore I need to continue to do that, and they want us to continue to stay in power. Um, does, does, what other ideas are out there? We've got a, let me read a couple, and then uh, Lion John has his hand raised, and then AJ, I'll come back to you guys in just a moment. Uh, Lion Roke shared, try to understand where the past district governors are coming from and discuss in private, one-on-one, uh, -on -one their concerns and ask for their support. So, so that's actually a plan of action. That, that's basically saying, as the district governor recognizing that there's a concern and, and saying, here, here are the issues. You know, we, we respect you as leaders, and we, you know, I need, I need your help. But at the same time, I need, we need to move on so that other people can can feel good about that. That would that would be a very um, difficult conversation to have, I would guess. So I would hope that the district governor would would you know plan. A, I love the idea of doing it privately. I think that's really important that you don't attack some kind of a situation like this, you know, it wouldn't be the place to do it at a, at a cabinet meeting or, or even a council meeting or, you know, a district meeting of any kind. Um, it needs to be something that, that's treated with, with respect. And so, you know, those past district governors deserve some respect, but that district governor deserves that as well. Lion Laurie shared, provide the past district governors with a task that will take their attention away from interfering in the district governor's efforts. It's a good idea. <laughs> and let's let's go to John here. I'm going to unmute you, Lion John. Uh, you might want to sit down with them and ask them what they feel are the problems in the district and what they think could be done to make the district better. And then give them an assignment or a committee to help do that. And, and that goes back to the idea that we talked about, that ask, ask, you know, and, and encouraging them to participate, asking them what needs to, to get done. They're using the knowledge that they have and then identifying some solutions and then giving them, as, as someone earlier said, another task. Because sometimes people don't let go because they don't have another task to move on to. Um, so if they could have the opportunity to, to you know, develop new leaders and, and find, out, find those new, you know, connect those new leaders to the positions that are open, and be more help than a hindrance to the, to the district governor. That's a win for everybody. Thank you, Lion John. Let's go to Lion AJ. Hello, can you hear me okay? We sure can. Right now, yes. Okay, sir. Uh, what I was going to say is building on all of that is asking these two to uh, be mentors to the next cabinet or members of the cabinet. They can share that knowledge and build up the leadership at the same time. Okay, I, I think I'm going to repeat this as best I can because I kind of missed a couple of the sentences. But again, um, as previously mentioned, finding them another task, you know, using the knowledge that they have, maybe connecting them as mentors to new people, and giving them a new task so that they feel like they're involved and um, you know still a part of the group, even not you know not the head of the group anymore, as the district governor has to be for that year, but you know using those skills to mentor other lions for leadership. Is that kind of what you said? I think it was. I think AJ may have muted himself, but that um, the mentorship. Oh, okay aspect and there were a couple of other folks who had also shared something similar 
um, both, uh, let's see, Lion and Keith share trying to focus their attention on a project that they're good at where they can contribute for the good of the district. That was similar to a, a prior um, comment and um, asking them or telling them that they're, this was from Lion Shelley had a similar comment as AJ of, of asking them to, to mentor current cabinet officers and, and reinforcing that their assistance is valuable but kind of targeting how that is. And AJ did reply in the or in the questions pane, confirming that that you summarized his his statement. So, okay, thank you. Um, so again, those are all really good ideas, and I, I hope as, as some of you who are sitting out there and, and you know at, at some point you know, see yourself in that district governor position, um, you know you you will put some of the knowledge that you've gained in this conversation so that you have that in case a situation arises that that you might need to use some of these ideas. That's kind of the idea, I think, behind the whole Lions University is that it just gives us so many more tools in our uh, Lions bag of tricks to pull out when we need to be able to do, you know, work in the community or work with our club. Um, I have another situation to share. So let's take a look at application number two. Um, you are the incoming governor and you have been working really hard to prepare for your year as district governor, and you've taken all the classes that you need to take, and you've gone to your area training, and you've come prepared for everything, and you're right now in the process of filling your cabinet position to prepare for your year of leadership. And there's a zone chair person who has not been visiting clubs or making a sport, and the clubs in the zone are really suffering because they really don't know what's happening at the district level. And this is really different behavior because last year as a district chair, this zone chair did a really good job. She was one of the outstanding district committee chair people. So you're the incoming governor and you really don't know how to address the situation. You have to come up with some solutions. What, what are your thoughts out there? Lion, Betty raised her hand. I'm going to come to you and give others a chance to type responses. Hi, um, the dis incoming district governor should talk to that zone chair, find out why they ha they didn't do the visiting and making the reports. Maybe it's not something that she is that into, and um, maybe she just needs a little more training to find out what is expected to her. As a district committee chair, that might be the thing that she focused on and was the happiest doing. So I would sit down and talk with her and see if she needs more training as to what is expected. I, you hit on some, a couple of ideas that I'm just going to, I'm going to emphasize if it's okay. Um, you said she's being, being happy, and I think as Lion leaders, one of the things that, that we can really pay attention is making sure that when you connect a Lion to an activity, whether it's a service project or a fundraiser or a district committee, that, that that's something that that person can feel good about participating. and. You also mentioned maybe she needed more training. Um, sometimes we put lions into a situation to be a leader, and we might provide them with training, but maybe it's not enough, or maybe it's not the right kind. And so considering that addition of training would be very key here, because it, you, you've given that, if you have this conversation, you know, that zone chair might say, well, I need a little, you know, I'm, I'm not good at this, or I, I, I you know, I need I need something. By having that conversation, you might find out a little bit more. What What does anybody else think? Thank you, Betty. We've got um, quite a few comments coming in. In fact, they're scrolling almost too quickly. Um, so, a couple folks also mentioned similarly to make sure that they have the training or that they understand and know what is expected. Um, Lion. Don and AJ both referenced that talking to them privately because there may be something personally, professionally, or family-wise that has shifted their focus or, or caused the change if they have other concerns that um, are taking a priority right now. Um, several folks mentioned you know, talking one-on-one -on -one with them and see if there are any you know, specific things or issues that are bothering them, things that they can be helped with. Sorry I'm not um, highlighting all of the names because you guys have a, several duplicates. Um, let's see. 
the looking for something that might be a little bit different. Um, I think those are those are the key themes that I'm seeing in the responses. Um, the training that you'd already mentioned, offering um, assistance with mentoring, either by yourself or by another lion, uh, was shared by Lion John. Um, someone else highlighted that there may be you know health issues or other reasons and needs that that um, they may have. Um, or perhaps trying to work with several clubs may be overwhelming from what they were anticipating was from Lion Myrna. So um, again, several key themes that you've discussed and highlighted. Okay. The, the, um, the whole personal thing, sometimes I think lions, we, we think we're superhuman and we, if there's a crisis in our lives, we don't want anybody else to know that. So uh, taking that time to talk to the as the incoming governor to talk to that bone chair might find out that, that there is an issue with a with a family change or job change or just you know being over, that, that the role of the bone chair versus the district committee chair are, are very are very different and um, trying to visit that many clubs might just be as someone said very overwhelming and a little more than than you could uh, than that person could manage um, but I'm going to throw you a curve here, and we, there's not a slide for the next application, so you're just going to have to roll roll with me here. But I, I'm wondering, you know, what kind of takeaways might might somebody have that that you could apply to a situation in that that either you know you've thought about or you've been wrestling with? Is there something that anything here that that you might be able to take away to address a situation that's happening now. And again, I'm not asking for anybody to name club names or people names, not anything like that, but something that maybe you could take back and, and really use um, in the next, you know, week, month, or, or whatever. Does anybody have something like that? Line Jamo will give folks a couple of minutes to think about that and respond. Um, and one thing I think that may be relevant, Lion Shelley shared this right as we were wrapping up the conversation about the mission statement and the uh, the code of ethics. And she suggested that that would be a good thing to read when we're facing conflict to help ground us and remind us why we're lions. So I think and I, that's, I think that's an, that's an excellent idea um, to to just you know to remind us that. There, that there is a code of our behavior, and I know, um, at least in our area, many of the, the district directories have the mission statement and the code of ethics printed, and you know that that's printed for a reason, you know, to remind us of, of what it is that we do and, and why we do it. So I think it's a very good idea to do that. So that's a, that's a that we can all take back as, as we face different conflicts and and reminding us what we have in common, uh, line. AJ shared uh, dealing with redistricting and attempting to merge multiple districts into one is a is an immediate application to um, the things we're talking about and sharing. Well, and I I can can tell you that um, you know change when you're you're changing with with redistricting or you're changing to, through a merger, either one of those requires everyone at the table to be allowed the opportunity to speak, the the opportunity to hear, you know, the, those voices to be heard, because those are big, big decisions. And um, it, it's really important that, that we apply those concepts of, of, of being diplomatic um, with, with people so that so that we can, you know, treat them the way they want to be treated and, and show that respect um, for them. Does anybody else have an idea? Lion Myrna shared the uh, for, uh, as an application, um, really getting to know your cabinet members. I think, and this is a little bit goes back to your last scenario as the district governor, but I think it applies to all of us, either at our club level or the district level, and, and really getting to know them and um, what what kind of appreciation they need and how best to work with different people. And, and that's come up. That's come up um, a couple different times tonight. You know, connecting people with with the right activity. Um, I, I can use this as an example. I am not artistic in terms of drawing at all. And if somebody put me on a committee where I had to do that, 
I would be really uncomfortable and I wouldn't be able to do that very well. But, you know, there are other things that I can do even though I'm not very good at drawing or painting or whatever. So, um, you know, it's important that as that lion leader that you, you do respect people's likes and dislikes and, and abilities and make those connections so that, that they feel good about the projects in which they're involved. Yep. I think that's all we've got right now. Okay. Well, um, I believe that that kind of covers all the material that we talked about tonight. Um, I, I would give you a couple other ideas for the, the Lions mission statement or the Lions code of ethics. Um, it would be very easy for that to be a club uh, program. You know, you could you could make it a project. You could you know talk about the lion statement and and what it actually means. You could make an activity out of the code of ethics um, to see have you know small groups talk about what it means. But it it would be a fun way to get lions to talk about what it is that brings us to that service. And all of us come to Lions because it makes us feel good too to, to see that uh, Lions payday when we get a smile or a thank you from someone we serve. You know, we don't do it for the awards or anything like that. You, you know, recognition, you do it because it's just the right thing to do. So um, with that, I guess I will throw it back to you, Bud. And um, if there's no other discussion, we can go back to our uh, review of our objectives and you know, we did define diplomacy and talk about you know, what that actually means. We did make a connection to some leadership concepts. We identified some behaviors that led to, to that can lead to diplomatic leadership, and then we did a couple different scenarios uh, about how that can impact our service. And I appreciate that uh, people were able to give us some ideas and some to share. And I hope that you found this. Uh, valuable in terms of um, causing you to feel comfortable in terms of stepping up into that leadership role within your district. This is also very applicable to our clubs. Um, you know, clubs have hurdles and difficulties as well. And I hope that this has been information that you will be able to utilize and share. So thank you very much for letting me uh, share a little bit of time this evening. Thank you, Jama. And <clears throat> as we were listening to some of the comments, um, I was able to. Uh, Wendy, you'll be proud of me. I was able to figure out this question pane and and been able to kind of look through some of these uh, comments as we were going through. And uh, one from AJ just came in towards the end here said one of our meeting topics for past president night is to talk about when we became lions. And you know, you get back to the idea of okay, why why did we all join? And let's let's get back to the the very mission of, of why we joined and and what we're all here for. And and I think that would help a lot in some of the situations that come up, uh, whether it's a, a PDG or a zone chair or whatever the case might be. Uh, trying to remember why we all became lines in the first place will really help. Um, resolve some of the issues I think that come up on a daily basis with us. So with that, I want to, um, I know we have a little bit of time here. I don't know if anyone else has any other comments to bring up or not, but we'd like to really thank uh, Wendy for being in the background and helping with the <clears throat> with the questions and, and comments and the raising of hands and, and also to uh, Jama for your presentation this evening on using diplomacy. So. Uh, we thank everyone involved and thank everyone for, for attending tonight as well. Um, we'll move on to this slide. Uh, you can go on and, and I encourage you to continue any conversations that you might have uh, electronically on the uh, discussion board. And that can be found on the lionsforum.org website. You know, by that green arrow there, just clicking on discussion boards and you can go to this particular class to this webinar and uh, continue your conversations um, at that point. I'd like to remind Lions of the two webinars we have scheduled for the next couple of weeks. 
Um, and again, that they 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 all begin at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and you can register by going to the cat uh, the calendar page on Lyons University website shown at the bottom of this slide. <clears throat> Our next two webinars next week on Tuesday, March 31st, uh, we have a uh, required bachelor's webinar, number 103, Club Success. And the following week will be a um, on the 7th of April is um, a master's program, a required course, uh, number 210, Zone Share Role and Responsibilities. So um, that scenario that Jamie had this evening um, might might help in resolve some of those issues by, by knowing the zone chair responsibilities ahead of time before someone takes on that role. But those are the next two courses coming up. I um, want to remind you again that you can take the quiz on this particular course uh, using diplomacy immediately after. Uh, it's up and running right now, so you can go to, um, go to the course page shown on the bottom of the slide and uh, clicking on the next unit tab at the at the bottom after after um, uh, completing this webinar uh, and that will take you directly to the quiz. Um, again I want to thank Jama and thank everyone for joining the webinar and remind you when you leave the session now uh, log out by clicking on the, the small X at the top right hand corner of the screen and confirming in the next box that appears uh, that you're that you're leaving. So with that, I thank you very much for attending this evening, and hope to see you again soon on um, future Lions University webinars. Thank you very much.